All right, ladies and gentlemen, so in this video, we're actually going to review what we discussed in class today, which was linear inequalities. So I'm actually just going to go over examples one through four in your textbooks and um, go over some or review some of the examples that we did in class today. And hopefully this is a good complimentary video for you to review, especially for next week's exam. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's let's establish a difference between an equation and an inequality. So if, for example, you solve an equation and you got that your answer was x equals 3, what this statement is saying is that x is going to equal 3. x cannot equal any number that is not 3. x cannot equal any number other than 3. And if we look at an inequality, for example, and we say x is less than 3. Now, I'm going to get to that in a minute. x is less than 3. What this statement is saying right here is that x can be any number smaller than 3. So that widens our possible answer answers to, to make the statement true. Um, so... Now I'm going to focus a little bit on the inequality, and I want to look at this real quick. X is less than three, and I want you to I want to uh, go over some of the symbols. Now, if I look at this, it says X is less than three, and X is less than three means that whatever number X is has to be a number smaller than three without including three so when you read an inequality you kind of have to read it from left to right the same way you would read a sentence x is less than three now why is it so important to understand that you read an inequality from left to right because i could just use the same statement but change the orders in which i write the numbers and i have three and x But now my inequality sign is faces. So the inequality sign will always face the number or the term that is greater. It's just the way that we read it that makes a difference. So if I read the same statement here in the bottom, but now the 3 and the x are inverted, it's not saying x is less than 3. It's actually saying 3 is greater than x. So again, this is why it's so important that we understand how we read um, the statement. Okay, so 3... Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if I can get this fixed now. There you go. So this is saying 3 is greater than x. 3 is greater, oh, not e. <laughs> Sorry. 3 is greater than x. 3 is greater than x. Okay? So it's the same inequality, just two different ways of reading it because we read it from left to right, which then brings me to the first statement. And that's explaining these signs. So this sign right here is less than, and this sign right here is greater than. So let me write that down. This is, this one right here is less than. And this one is greater than. Now, what you need to understand is that the inequality sign will always face the greater term. It's just the way that you read it, which makes it less than or, or greater than. Again, looking at this example, x is less than 3 because the x and the 3, right, are in different positions and you read it from left to right. And if I do the same thing, 3 is greater than x and it's just because I inverted the positions of the 3 and the x. Now, with that in mind, another thing that we, let me, let's go and graph some of these real quick. So what is the graph for? The graph, ladies and gentlemen, is just to determine the possible answers that would make this statement true. Now, I'm, I'm going to do this one because I already have it there, and then we're going to go to the ones in your book. Now, x is less than 3. Now, I draw a number line, and I know that that statement means that whatever number x is, it's going to be less than 3. 
So whatever number X is, is going to be a number smaller than three. So in order for me to graph it, I have to think of numbers that could possibly be smaller than three. And you might be thinking, well, two or one, right? And remember in a number line, we have zero, which is kind of like that place in between positive and negative terms. We have negative one on this side. <clears throat> we have, excuse me, we also have negative two. And it extends infinitely. Just remember that a line extends infinitely in both directions. So I'm actually going to try my best to do like the little arrowhead. And here on the right side, all the terms are positive. So this would be one positive two positive three and again it extends infinitely to the right meaning it extends to positive infinity extends to positive infinity so negative so how would I go about graphing this let me change the color let me pick I don't know blue or if it lets me pick blue there you go let's pick blue now this means that x can be any number smaller than 3 without including the 3. Why without including the 3? Because remember, I want to make my statement true. So if it's 3 is not included, I would draw what we call an open point, which means I don't fill it in. And then any number smaller than 3, and, and all that means is that 3 is not part of my answer. Any number smaller than 3 would be two or one or zero or negative one and so on and so forth which is why we kind of have the ray moving to the left now again let me clarify this why is three not positive let's suppose we want to check our answer let's suppose we want to check to see if this inequality statement is true so i have x is less than three X is less than three. X is less than three. So if I want to make this statement true, if I say three is less than three, that makes no sense because three cannot be less than three. Three is equal to three, right? So that's why this is three is not part of my answer because it makes this statement false. If I want to make this statement true, if I want to make X is less than three true, that means I have to change the value of x to numbers, possible numbers that are smaller than 3. So if I say 2 is less than 3, if I change the value of x to 2, and I say 2 is less than 3, well, then that means that this statement is true, and 2 is less than 3. This statement is false. 3 is not less than 3. 3 is equal to 3. This statement is true. 2 is less than 3. Now, let's look at the same thing but when I have less than or equal to. So let's say I have the following statement. Give me one sec, guys. Let's say I have the following statement. Let's say I have x is less than or equal to negative four give me one sec to negative four less than or equal to negative four now i want to make this statement true so less than or equal to negative four so less than or equal to means that in order for the statement to be true my answer would be any number smaller than or equal to negative four that's what this little line here means, less than or equal to or greater, or, or, or like we're going to see in a minute, greater than or equal to. So negative 4, and I want to know if this statement is true. Negative 4 is less than or equal to negative 4. Is that true? Yes, this statement is true because this little line here, right, the subscript or the line, indicates that four, negative 4 is part of my answer. So this is true. So this one checks out. And if I decide to say, well, negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 4. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, 
is in fact negative 5 less than or equal to negative 4. So negative 5 less than or equal to negative 4 is this statement true? Yes, it is true because negative 5 is smaller than negative 4. So my next step, let's see if I can do it down here, is to graph the function. Now we know that 0 is our middle point, right? And we'll kind of just kind of go 1, 2, 3, negative 4 will be about here. So negative 4. And since it's less than or equal to, that means that now I fill in that point. I don't leave it in like an open point like I did a minute ago. And then I just draw my ray moving to negative 4. Remember that a ray is a, f a segment of a line that extends infinitely in one direction. In this case, the one direction is to the left. The one direction is to the left. So, um, the one direction is to the left. So, now what would happen, and the same thing would also be true if I had greater than or equal to. Let me change that. What if, what if, instead of x is less than or equal to negative 4, I would have had x is greater than or equal to, I don't know, I'll, I'll think of a number now, uh, 5. x is greater than or equal to 5. So x is greater than or equal to 5. So here we have the x is greater than or equal to 5. Now, one of the things I usually tell my students is that if the inequality is facing the variable, usually that means that the graph or the ray is going to move to the right because it's saying whatever number x is is greater than or equal to positive 5. So if I want to see if this statement is true, I would say is 5 greater than or equal to 5? Is 5 greater than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Why is 5 than greater than or equal to 5? Because it says it right here, equal to. Now, um, is 7 greater than or equal to 5? Yes, 7 is greater than or equal to 5 because 7 is larger, is, has, well, that's a larger number than 5. So how do I graph that again? This is my number line. And 0 would be here. So... Uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, let's say 5 is about here, and it's positive 5, and it's greater than, so that means it moves to the right, and since it's greater than or equal to, that means 5 is part of my answer, so it moves to the right, infinitely to the right. Infinitely to the right. Now, let's look at the examples in your book. Let me actually clear all drawings. The example in your book, example one in your book says, um, graph x is greater than two. So we're going to graph x is greater than two. And by now you've seen this video and you should have an idea of what to do. x is greater than two. That means that the inequality sign is facing the variable, which means it's going to move to the right. It's going to move to the right because the inequality sign is facing the variable. And... It's going to be an open point because it's saying x is greater than 2. It's not saying, let me see if I got it right or wrong. Let me see if, it's, if it was greater or, no, I'm sorry. It's not greater. I'm sorry. It's less than. This is the my mistake. In your book, it's example 1, it's less than. x is less than 2. Okay. So if it faces the number, like it's facing the two in this case, usually that indicates the graph is moving to the left. Now, this can be confusing. So what I would do is I would try to make this statement true. X is less than 2. What number can I think of that is less than 2? Can I say 2 is less than 2? No, I cannot say 2 is less than 2 because 2 is not less than 2. 2 is equal to 2. So that means that I know 2 is not going to be part of my answer. Can I say 1 is less than 2? Is 1 a smaller than number than 2? Yes, it is. So that means that my graph is going to be any number smaller than 2 without including the 2. So again... If this is my 0, then this is 1 and this is 2, my graph would be about, it would start here, 
and the ray would move to the left infinitely without including the two. So that's pretty much what your graph would look like. So this is example 1A. Now in your book, example 1B says, well, what if x is greater than or equal to negative 1? So if x is greater than or equal to negative 1, again, if this confuses you as into which direction it goes or whatever, remember that inequalities have to be a true statement. So sometimes it just helps to plug in the number. Now, x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So if this statement is true, can I say negative 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1? In this case, you can because the inequality is indicating that 1 is part of the answer. So this makes the statement true. Um, can I say 0 is greater than negative 1, greater or equal to negative 1? And in this case, yes, it is also true because technically 0 is closer. I'm sorry, I just realized that I wrote negative 0. Um, let me erase that because I did not invent a new mathematical property. All right, so in this case, this is true because 0 is, in fact, greater than negative 1 because it's closer to being a positive. So to grab this function, I simply say, oh, excuse me, to grab this function, all I do is just say, So all I do in this case is just say um, x is greater than um, negative 1. So that means this is my 0. My negative 1 is right next to my 0. And since it says it's greater than or equal to, that means that any number greater than or equal to negative 1 is going to be true. So that means that my graph is going to move to the right. And I fill in the circle because negative 1 is part of my answer. So I simply say negative 1 to infinity, to positive infinity in this case. Now sometimes, and we're going to see that in our next example, you can have compound inequalities, which means that you can have more than one thing happening at the same time. And that brings us to example 2a. Example 2a says negative 1, negative 1 is less than x, less than x, but x is less than negative 2. x is less than negative 2. x is less than negative 2. Now, what that means... Now, sometimes this, these can be tricky and a little confusing. So what I like to do is I like to break them down. So I'm actually going to write it in a different color here. I'm going to break it down. The first part of my inequality says negative 1 is less than x. So negative 1 is less than x. It just means you can say negative 1 is less than x, or you can notice that the inequality sign is facing the x. That means that x is going to be a number that is greater than negative 1. Okay, that's what it means. Negative 1 is less than x is just telling me that whatever number I decide to plug in in the x has to be greater than negative 1. And the other part of the equation says x is less than negative 2. So x is less than negative 2. What does that indicate? What x is less than negative 2 indicates is that here, x is going to be a number that is larger than negative 1, but it has it's also a number that is smaller than negative 2. And since neither the inequality expressions have a line underneath, that means that negative 1 is not part of the answer and negative 2 is not part of the answer. So how do I graph that? Well, in this case, you're not going to have a ray extending infinitely in both directions, but rather you're going to have a line segment. So what is what did that means? That means is that I'm going to first draw my graph by parts. Let me first draw the, um, uh, the inequality. We first draw the first part of the compound inequality. Negative 1 is less than x, meaning x is greater than negative 1. Negative 1 is not part of my answer. So that means it's an open point. So I know that it's going to start here. And this is saying x is less than, uh, not negative 2. I'm sorry. This is a mistake. It's not let x is less than negative 2. I just realized that. It's x is less than positive 2. 
pardon the error. I didn't realize it. Again, so let's let's kind of go back to it. The first part of the inequality is indicating that x is going to be a number greater than negative 1, or negative 1 is going to be less than x. So that means I'm going to start at negative 1 and move to the right. And the second part is indicating that x is also going to be a number smaller than positive 2 without including the positive 2 because it doesn't have the equal to sign down here. So that means that my graph is going to start at negative 1. And since the other part says that x is a number smaller than negative, uh, smaller than 2, excuse me, that means it moves to the right. So 0, 1, and 2. Now, if this is confusing, what I do, what I would do is I would substitute it. So let's say this is kind of confusing to me. I don't know what this means. And I break it down. I know that it means that x is going to be a number that is greater than negative 1. So what number, let me do it down here. What number can x be greater, what number is greater than negative 1? Well, if you're thinking 0, that is correct. So I'm, this part of the statement is true because 0 is greater than negative 1. But it's also telling me that x has to be smaller than 2. Is 0 smaller than 2? Yes, it is. So that means that my graph is going to start at negative 1. And it's going to move till I reach a number smaller than positive 2. It's not going to go beyond that. It is not going to go beyond positive 2 because if I look at my compound inequality, it's telling me x is going to be a number greater than negative 1, but x is going to be a number smaller than 2. And all I did here was I plugged in 0 to see if that would make my statement true. Is what I did here. And as I plug in 0, I do realize, and that's just uh, trying to indicate what we did. As I plug in 0 here, I do realize 0 is greater than 1 and 0 is smaller than 2. So that's correct. Now, sometimes you will have um, inequalities where you have two completely uh, different set of, of numbers or indicators. So let's look at example 2b, and then we'll do example 3, and that would be the end of this class. So if I look at example 3, or excuse me, if I look at example 2b, it says x is less than or equal to negative 2. x is less than or equal to negative 2. x is less than or equal to negative 2. x is less than or equal to negative 2. Less than or equal to negative 2. Or it says, or, or, x is greater than 1. Make sure I'm not reading the problem wrong. Yeah, x is greater than 1. So here in this graph, we're actually not going to have a compound inequality like we had here or an inequality indicating or a fixed inequality or whatever other name it has. Here we have two different, entirely different sets. So one part of the, of the graph is actually going to be saying x is less than or equal to negative 2. And that means that, well, negative 2 is down here more or less. And 0 or negative 1. Zero would be here. And this would be one and two. So you have two different statements, I guess, if you want to call them in, in the same graph. So let's look at the first one. X is less than or equal to negative 2. What that's saying is that this first part is X is going to be any number smaller than or equal to negative 2. So that means that negative 2 is part of my answer. And it, let's say, and again, if you're if you have any questions or any doubts with this, just plug in numbers that you think would fit. So what number could I say is less than or equal to negative 2? Well, Besides negative 2, because it's saying less than or equal to, I can say negative 3. Is negative 3 smaller than or equal to negative 2? Yes, it is, because negative 3 is farther from 0. So that means that, um, that oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, excuse me. 
it's saying that x is going to be no no pardon me again i thought i wrote the problem wrong but it, it's okay it's saying that x is going to be any number smaller than negative two so negative three does fit the bill i apologize i was reading the problem wrong um negative three does fit the bill just like negative four would fit the bill because negative four is smaller than negative two. So that means that the first part of my inequality is going to be here. I'm going to include the negative two, which is why I circled the point. And then it moves infinitely, in this case, to the left because any number after negative two to the left is smaller. And on the same graph, we have x is greater than one. Now, what this means is that one is not included in the answer in this case. One is not included in the answer in this case. One is not included. Since one is not included, I know that I'm not gonna have a filled in point and any number greater than one, well, two is greater than one. So that means that the other part is gonna move to the right. And that is example. 2a and 2b. Now we're going to move on to example three, which is a story problem. And then after that, we would be done with this video lesson. So example number three is a story problem. And it talks about solving inequalities. And, and basically, you would solve an inequality the same way you would solve um, the same way you would solve an equation, meaning that if on one side of the equation I'm adding, that means that on the second side of the equation I will be um, and I would be subtracting. It all depends on what is being indicated from us. All right. So let's look at the problem. The problem says fair. It says you have fifty dollars to spend at a county fair. You spend twenty dollars for admissions. You want to play a game that costs a dollar fifty. Describe the possible numbers of times you can play the game. Now, whenever we're working with story problems, we always have a part that's given to us and a part that's asked to us. So the given information that we have is we have $50 to spend. To spend. We pay $20 for the price of admission. the admission cost and the game you want to play costs a dollar fifty okay and the game you want to play costs a dollar fifty so the question that the problem is asking of us is to describe the possible number of times you can play the game. Describe the possible number of times you can play the game. And describe the number of time, possible number of times you can play the game. Okay, so let's set up the inequality, right? So I know that I paid $20 for admissions. And the game or each game costs $1.50. Dollar $1.50. And we'll use G for games. Now, you can write 1.5 or 1.50 when you solve it. It really doesn't make any difference. Now, all I have to spend is $50. I cannot go over that. So that means that this inequality is going to be less than or equal to 50 because I can spend $50, but I can't spend $51. So that's why 50 is part of the uh, inequality, and that's why it's less than because it's saying you have $50 to spend, no more than that. So the first thing we're going to do is solve this inequality. Now I know that if I spend $20 for admissions, the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 20 on both sides because that's going to indicate right, that I had to spend that amount of money in order to actually um, 
get in the county fair, get to uh, be admitted to the county fair. So this cancels out and 50 minus 20 is 30. So that means we have one. Again, you want to write 150, you can, or if you want to write 1.5, you can also. It, it really doesn't make a difference because if the zero is to the right of the decimal, it's just a placeholder. Anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and for the benefit of those students that might be really visual, I'm just going to write, go ahead and write the zero. Is less than or equal to 50 minus 20 is 30. So $30, right? I spent in, I spent 20 to get in. So out of the 50, I spent 20. So that leaves me with 30, which means that now what I have to do is just divide the 30 by the dollar 50 that it costs to play the game. So 1.50 here. And I do the same thing on this side. 1.50. And when you divide 30 by 1.50, that is going to equal to 20. So this side is going to cancel out and it's going to be G is less than or equal to 20. So that means that you can only play about 20 games with the money that you have left over. And ladies and gentlemen, less than or equal to, let me write that because I don't think, although there's a line here, I don't think you can appreciate it very well. There you go. That's better. G is less than or equal to $20. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video lesson, the first part of section 1.6. In our next video lesson and in our next class, we will be finishing the section. So hope this video is helpful. Have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in our next class.